God knew that you would not be perfect in a day. But in case you happen to fall, bounce back. You belong there. Don't stay there. When you fall, don't run away. No. 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 Congratulations. I am a boy, Saloko Serita. Matiba, I get Unwabza, Loponisi will. Look at a reckon like this. Was she talking about these things? The idea in a shock, Unga Tutumi. Keep on going to God with that thing. If you know God accept you, if you know God loves you, and you love God, and you want to do the right thing, keep on bringing the thing to God. Victory is yours. I'm telling you. People who are addicted. They, they come drinking. I'm, to, I'm just using BS as, as an example. They think they will never leave their liquor not once. Because they, they don't see the living in how to live in this world without liquor. It's like those who are addicted to pornography and sexual stuff and all these things. They don't know how you can live without a They don't know how you can do that. They don't know. But the more you begin to glean on the righteousness of God and the love of God you begin to see the love of God the light of God begin to get into your mind suddenly you look at that snuff is this the thing that troubled me for so long is this pornography that was troubling me for so long. Then I was foolish. Eh? <laughs> I was really foolish. Hey, ane, I was really immature. Because when you will see this thing as dirty as it is, you will see the brightness of your destination with God as it can become. So, so righteousness will produce fruits of righteousness. And Eventually, you don't force it. When you begin to understand more of your place as a righteous person, you do things that are right by nature. You do things that are right by nature. They automatically. So who makawe na you just automatically do the right thing. Do you understand that? But if you are a sinner, you do things to impress. You do things to please people as a hypocrite. You know, you like you want to pray because you really want to appear like you are a prayer warrior it doesn't work that way you do it because revelation of your place is in you now, let, let me close the part of the scene God knew that uh, even if you are born again you are you may sleep and commit sin. But he made a provision. 
a genuine person who is born again who loves God he is looking for the way to get out of sin he is not you are not looking for a way to sin so since God knew that you will not be perfect in a day he made a provision that the moment you know you have missed it you confess it the Bible says you will be restored back to your righteousness because you know righteousness is a breastplate yes everybody yes what does the breastplate cover? Anybody? I know man. Just, just for the sake of involvement. Go. What does the breastplate cover? Isn't it in, in Ephesians chapter 6? There is a helmet. Let us say, what does the help? There is a breastplate of righteousness in Chapter 6, verse 14. Verse 14, chapter 6, verse 14. What does it cover? Huh? Mbilu. So spiritually, your breastplate spiritual, it covers your conscience. Do you understand that? Masukumake. It means your conscience must always be kept pure. Because if your conscience is not is condemned, you, you, you feel you, you there is condemnation in your heart. Your, your faith is not going to work. Hello? Yes. If there is any condemnation in your heart, fix that thing so that you, you become your conscience is free from sin and condemnation. Any kind of sin will cause your heart to feel condemned. So righteousness, if you keep it as eh, your position, it will give you boldness. When you go to God, it will give, give you boldness. When you face problems of life, yes. When you, whatever you face contrary, boldness, you will face it. You will also tell yourself very boldly. Because the devil is always trying to condemn you. You are not good enough. You are not good enough. You have not prayed enough. You have not given enough. Hey, you have not done this enough. Condemnation, condemnation. But when you read scriptures, and something condemns, you feel condemned in your heart. You have to fix it. So that your conscience is always clean. God will never condemn you. It is not God who condemns you. It is your conscience. When you do wrong. And also it is the devil. Who come and condemns you. So keep your conscience clean. Now God made a provision. That when you sin. You have to bounce back to back to your righteousness. In 1983, I learned this thing from a certain uh, man of God by the name of Juan Carlos Ortiz. Then he gave this example. That you see those people what the has, what the Oh yes. Sometimes what they do, it seems magical. Isn't it? They walk on the rope. Have you seen them walking on the rope? And then, then we ask ourselves question. Can a human being 
walk on the rope. <laughs> and you see them just walking. Like, but hey, I have learned also that those guys they practice a lot. I don't deny the fact of magic. Maybe it's there, but they practice a lot. Magic. I learned something. From that man. He said, when you see somebody walking on the net up on the rope there, look underneath. There is a net. So sometimes they say these people they sleep and fall. And when they fall, when they hit the net, they bounce back. Uh, and they stand on top of the rope again. So just because you don't know, you think it is part of the show. They fell. But because they don't belong down there, they bounce back immediately. But you never know that these people fell. God knew that you would not be perfect in a day. But in case you happen to fall, bounce back. You belong there. Don't stay there. When you fall, don't run away. No. No. Look at the prodigal son. Ah, this one is a classical example. This boy, he went away and squandered the wealth of the family with prostitutes and all. Gambling and all. But they came a time the Bible says he came to himself and said oh no it was the conscience what am I doing here I've gambled the wealth of the family away and, and those prostitutes never helped me with anything I'm, I'm sick, sick now I'm, I'm hungry. hungry I had so much people following me they, they are all gone, gone. the Bible says he came to himself oh at home. My daddy had so many servants. Oh, what I will do? I will just go to him. Rather than just dying of starvation. I will just say to him, I have sinned against you and against heaven please forgive me would you make me one of your servants and he began to rehearse and he went he went back home as he was going back home the bible says his father listen to this this is exciting his father the bible says he saw him from a distance as I was reading there I asked myself a question doesn't an old man see far away it means where the old man was seated every day every day when he went up to sit in his seat he was thinking about his child he was thinking about his boy if he can only come back I hope he's still alive my son is still alive I pray. and I hope he's still coming back and he would look at the road that he used and and say, I pray that he comes back. That is why he saw him from a distance and the Bible says he stood up 
Aima. Surprisingly, he turned towards the boy. I asked myself a question. Does an old man know how to run? No, 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 he does not know. But because of his compassion, because of his love, he ran. Met his boy. The Bible says he embraced him. Embraced him. Remember, this boy had so many months without bathing. I, I wonder the fragrance of the boy. The clothes. But the old man, he did not care. He embraced him. And this boy wanted to run away from the embrace. Because he knew he does not deserve the embrace. And he was trying to pull away. And he began to say what he was rehearsing. I have sinned against you. Please forgive me. If I'm not your child. Make me one of your servant. What the boy said. Strike deep pain. This is my boy. I'm so happy that he's bad. I don't care whether he's dirty. I don't care whether he's esteemed. I'm so glad that he's still alive. And the boy wants to become a servant. The old man said, was still embracing. Bring the fated calf. Bring the sandals. Bring the garment. Bring the ring. The old man was saying, You being my son will never change. My love towards you will never change. No matter what happens, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are mine. Yes. Listen to this. Did you know? I'm Mr. Bakay. The old man, what he said, he was responding to what the boy was saying. During those days, when we read history, servants in those days, they did not put on shoes. That is why the old man said, bring the shoes. He was responding to say, you will never become a servant. Bring the ring. You know what the ring means? The wealth of this family it belongs to you. During those days, the ring signifies the right of signing, particularly checks and credit cards. It means with the ring, the boy could go to any Mercedes Benz. Garage. I tie a garage. When I want to get a Rolls Royce, as long as he with that ring, he could take anything. Righteousness. Hey, Kululama. Righteousness. Kululama. You know, when you look at what God has done, you can do better. You can humble yourself better. You can humble yourself better. This righteousness did not just come for free. If God could have sent us to hell, he, he, could, he would still be right. But because he loved us, but for the justice sake, somebody had to die so that we become righteous. So that he can look at us the same way he looked at you. It's a gift. You don't have to do anything. It's, it's, it's your position. A, a position, young win. So, if you are struggling with 
things. You don't, you don't understand your position. You are not a sinner. Sin is strange. It's a stranger in your, in your compound. God has done so much for us. When I think what the Lord has done, every time I pray, many a times I worship, the way He saved me. When I was running away from Him, he could not leave me. His mercy is everlasting. He kept on pulling me. Those, those, of, you, those of you who might be living in sin, I know it's the same thing. Um, Every time you find yourself being pulled away to sin, God will use your conscience and the Holy Spirit to pull you back. Don't die in sin. Don't, don't stay there. You don't belong there. You don't belong there. Come back home. We are Kaya. Come back home. We are Kaya. Your father is waiting for you. Tata wena Come back home. We are Kaya. It doesn't matter where you are. Asuna maka ole kui. Come back home. Wanga we are Kaya. Enjoy fellowship with the father. We are Tipina. Eko tanga na natata. When you begin to grow, you begin to look at the love of the Father. You said, Oh, my Father, I treated you very badly. I misinterpreted your love. I was so much immature. Could have I known? I should have saved you from the age of 12. Oh, I'm so. I'm, uh, I'm so repentant. You know, God, forgive me. Help me now. Because now you begin to see that God has saved you to want something good. Hey. Yes. You don't know what God has prepared for you. Oh, do I still have You don't know. I'm Stevie. What God has prepared Let's for each she one of kwembu, you. Misela, you know, one in one. this world, well, the wealthy system, system misaba, they will treat you like a piece of rubbish. They classify you. But what God has for you is so powerful. The Bible says your blessing is in the spirit where the devil cannot go. So since now you are born again by the spirit of God you need to work to be able to go in the spirit in Christ Jesus and see your blessing and take them. The bottom line you are a righteous person. You are much bigger than what you think you are. You are much better than what you are. Even sickness, it doesn't belong to you. When you become born again, your salvation and healing is one package as we preached the other day. Your prosperity is one package. The reason why sometimes we struggle and struggle it, it is because we are not in the spirit. We don't know how to get and take our blessing in the spirit. Let me tell you you are a blessed one 
kateka. You just need to know how to activate your blessing. As a righteous person. Even when you pray, you need to know how do the righteous people pray. The Bible says the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. A righteous man is not the one who is doing good always. When we read the same James chapter 5 and go a little further, it tells you that uh, Elijah was the same man who had emotions. Sometimes he felt so discouraged. Sometimes he was so afraid. Intimidated by a woman. And he ran the whole day. The whole prophet. The whole prophet. But the Bible says as a righteous man he prayed so that it does not rain. And it never rained for three and a half years. So, a righteous person does not mean that you don't have weaknesses. Don't mistake people. Everybody has weaknesses. But righteousness is your position. If you understand righteousness, you will live victorious. You will strive and get to perfection. You will reach a place where you will live holy. You will reach a place where you Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Please stand on your feet.